Amen. 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 Well, it's story time. Amen. Wish an equal. Amen. Gather round, y'all. Amen. 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 Last time now. Amen. A little quieter. Amen. Glad you're here now. Amen. 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 Hello, everybody. It's great to see you again. I'm so glad you could be here with me today. I'm Reverend Shaniqua. So it's a new week. Should we learn a new song? I'll sing it once and then you sing it with me. All right, here it goes. You ready? I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. So the song's really easy. It's a zipper song, so there'll be other verses, but we'll learn those later. So you ready? Sing it with me. Let's try it again. Remember the actions. Joy, 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 joy. Down in my heart. Okay, here we go. You ready? I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. Should we try it one more time? Let's try it one more time. Okay, ready? I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. It's a wonderful song. All right, let's pray. Will you pray with me? God, thank you for bringing us to a new day and a new week. Help us to love you and love each other. Amen. Is there something that brings you joy? Is there something that you really enjoy creating? Maybe you like to cook or maybe you like to sew. In today's story, T. Marie loves to draw and she uses her skill to help her family. Let's listen to the story. Painted Dreams by Karen Lynn Williams. Pictures by Catherine Stock. T. Marie sat in the early morning shade behind her cement house and drew pictures on the rough wall with a piece of orange brick, she made a beautiful sky. With a white stone, she made a giant bird. And with black charcoal, she made herself with curly, dark hair. T. Marie, T. Marie, so here you are. Mama stood over her frowning. I call you and you don't come. You are eight years old, too old for this foolishness. Mama bent over and rubbed out T. Marie's picture with the hem of her dress. Come, she said, I am late for market. You must watch the little ones. T. Marie took her sisters up the mountain to collect firewood. It's too hot, Josette complained. It's too far, Fifi whined. The sweat trickled down T. Marie's back, but she did not complain. Instead, she dreamed about making pictures of huge green trees that would wrap the whole village in cool shade. 
On their way home, the sisters pass the yard of Monsieur Antoine, the Bocor, a powerful priest and a healer. The three houses in his compound were painted with many colorful designs that made the heart pound like a drum. A large black and red snake decorated the entrance to the biggest house. When Josette and Fifi saw it, they stopped their complaining and walked quickly past. T. Marie was afraid too, but she lingered to admire the paintings. She could paint like that. With colors and brushes, she could make pictures that made your heart sing. In the afternoon, T. Marie took her sisters to the river to bathe, and they passed the home of Missy Antoine again. The Pocor himself was sitting on the veranda, not far from the giant snake. His back was turned to the road. Josette and Fifi squealed and ran down the path, but not T. Marie. Missy Antoine was painting. Holding her breath, she crept quietly up to the hedge and peeked over the barbed cactus. She could not keep her eyes from the tubes of color, the fine brushes and the white canvas that sparkled in the sun. Suddenly, the Bokor put down his brushes and turned toward the road as though he knew someone was there. T. Marie jumped back from the hedge and raced after her sisters. She didn't stop to catch her breath until she reached the river. With such fine paint, she thought as she joined her sisters in the muddy water, I would make a sparkling river racing to the blue-green sea full of many colored fat fish for the children to catch. I want to buy paints, T. Marie told her parents as they sat by the cook fire that evening. Ha, her mother said, we have no money for such things. But T. Marie is a good artist, said Josette. She makes beautiful pictures even without paints. One day, said Papa, the gods will look with favor on this poor family and I shall buy T. Marie all the paints in the market. She will be a famous artist, like Monsieur Antoine. Maybe Monsieur Antoine has paints for T. Marie, said Fifi. You think Monsieur Antoine has paints to throw away on little girls, said Mama. T. Marie smiled. She knew where she could get the paints. That evening, as darkness came to the village, T. Marie crept back to the yard of Missy Antoine. She could not see the snake in the dark, but she knew it was there. A thin, scruffy dog was nosing through the papers and garbage outside the Bacor's gate. Allez, go, T. Marie whispered and waved him away. Quietly, she poked at the pile, always looking over her shoulder. Her heart beat in her ears. She could barely see, but she could feel objects in the damp ashes. A rusty tin can, and then a broken piece of plastic. Nothing of any use. Still, she raked through the heap with her fingers. There, under a soggy piece of cardboard, she found what she was looking for. T. Marie gathered up her find in her skirt and ran all the way home. She hid the treasure under the roots of the old mapa in the yard and slipped silently into the house. As soon as sunlight came the next day, T. Marie was at the mapa. She pulled the six twisted tubes of paint from their hiding place. Empty. But no, as she put them down, 
she saw that her hands were streaked with color. She added water to the colors. Then, using chicken feathers and bunches of goat hairs as brushes, she made a small picture on a scrap of paper from the trash heap. When T. Marie looked up from her work, Papa was standing there. My eldest daughter has a gift, he said. But now you must go with your mother to the market. The little ones will come to the field with me. The small marketplace of their village was crowded but few people made their way back to Mama's stall at the end of the row. No one comes to buy our fine red tomatoes and our sweet yellow onions, Mama grumbled. The spirits have forgotten us. <sighs> Tea Marie sighed. It was true. They did not have a lucky stall. She leaned against the cool market wall. It was covered in soft green moss. T. Marie picked at the moss with her finger. The wall underneath was smooth and white. Using a stone, she tore away the moss until she had cleaned the whole wall behind Mama's stall. It was nearly as white as Missy Antoine's canvas. T. Marie, Mama called, it's time to go. Coming, she answered. She picked up her basket of vegetables. It was still full. They had sold almost nothing. The basket was heavy, but T. Marie did not rest until they reached the front step of their own house. Before anyone could ask her to help with the chores, she dashed out back to the Mapau tree and collected her paints. Then she slipped out the gate and ran back to the marketplace. I wonder what she's going to do. T. Marie looked at her big clean wall for a long time. Finally, she began to paint. She used her precious colors very carefully. And when she needed them, she also used red brick, black charcoal, and bits of green moss. She used goat hairs to make fine lines and chicken feathers to make thicker ones. A hairy mango seed she found on the ground worked perfectly to fill in the large spaces with color. T. Marie worked as if she were in a trance until the soft light of the afternoon sun was gone. The next morning, when T. Marie and Mama came to the market, many people were crowded around Mama's stall. What is the trouble? Mama asked. No trouble, said T. Marie. They have come to see my pictures. Mama looked at the leafy green trees with many colored birds in their branches and the huge chicken and fat pig each big enough to feed a whole village. Then she reached out a finger to trace the tiny market girl with a giant basket full of fine red tomatoes the size of soccer balls and golden yellow onions as big as the sun. Without a word, she quickly put out her tomatoes and onions. T. Marie helped to make neat piles it seemed as if the entire village came to admire T. Marie's paintings. And while they were there, people bought Mama's fine vegetables. Even Papa and Josette and Fifi came. In the gardens, people are talking of T. Marie's paintings, Papa said. Mama nodded. It's like carnival. So many customers... We barely have enough room here. Look, squeaked Josette. Wide-eyed with fear, Fifi just pointed. Monsieur Antoine was standing in front of the pictures. He looked at them a long time. Finally, he turned to Mama. Who has done this work, he asked. 
My eldest daughter, Missy, she said quietly. The Bokor looked straight at T. Marie. You have a gift from the spirits. You should practice this talent. His smile was warm and friendly. T. Marie could only smile back. Yes, she would practice, for there were many more pictures she wanted to make. T. Marie stood beside Missy Antoine in the stall at the end of the marketplace and looked at all the people who had come to see her paintings. She knew she could not dream a better picture than this. The end. So at first, T. Marie's mother thought her drawing or painting wasn't useful. But it was useful because later, T. Marie used her gifts and skill of drawing to help her family sell their produce. We all have gifts and skills. What are some gifts and skills that you're developing? Maybe cooking or running or crafting? Or, you know, every day we're developing our singing skills, right? We learn a new song. Well, it's been great having you today. I look forward to seeing you again soon and singing with you and developing those wonderful skills that you're learning. All right, remember, God is always with you and God loves you always. Until next time, know that you are a gift and let your light shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Well, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Until I see you again, I'm gonna let it shine. Until I see you again, I'm gonna let it shine. Until I see you again, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine.